Welcome out there to another episode of Barn Songs. Tonight, my guest is Randy Cunningham, my buddy of uh, the group Shadowcaster, uh, or the project. The, the group. The, the project uh, Shadowcaster, and I would also add now a member of uh, my project, Michael and the Pentecost. Yeah. Slang in that pedal steel. <laughs> Just like Junior Brown. How you doing, man? Good, man. It's good to have you back. Yeah. Obviously, we hang out all the time, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to do another episode for the second season. Uh, yeah, it's fu like it's funny, man. It doesn't feel like it's been a year and a half or more, but it has been. And, I mean, it, yeah, because last year we did ours probably at the beginning of the season of Barn Songs, right? And then yeah, I think, this year we're at, like, at the end. I think we may have been the first two episodes filmed. Yeah. Uh, we weren't the first two episodes released, but we were the yeah. first two filmed. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm saying it's probably been a solid year and a half plus. Yeah. Time, time flies. My beard went away, and then it grew back, and now it's longer. Yeah. <laughs> I think my hair was shorter, but that's about it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we'll see when I get to my episode. Uh, fun fact, I actually had... Um, Lance uh, of the Wilt family, uh, when he did his episode, for anyone that pays this much attention, his hair is shorter on the song performance than it is during the interview. That is a fun fact. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I'm an idiot and didn't know how to work the camera, and it stopped working. Oh, so he had to come back like four days later, and he had gotten a haircut in between, even though he wore the same clothes. <laughs> For uh, that's continuity. The, that's funny. I'm going to have to watch it. <laughs> yeah, to, to check I out, you know, make sure Lance had a good hair, <laughs> hairdo. Um, awesome. Anyway, again, welcome. Good to have you. It's, it's, we waited till September to continue filming, and uh, it's still, I, I don't know if I'd call it sweltering, borderline. No, <laughs> not sweltering. It's a little warm. It's definitely a little yeah. toasty. Yeah. Should have opened the barn up earlier. It's all you know. Hindsight 2020. Um, what are you going to play for us? I have a song that I'm uh, finishing up called Surfing on the Sand. Uh, it's an original. And uh, it's kind of more written on electric guitar, but I'm going to be playing, obviously playing it on the acoustic today. Sure. But, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of just like a western y, surfy jam. Kind of okay. Um, how long has it you know been in the works? Is it a finished product? It's basically finished. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's probably going to change if I have other members sure. on it. Sure. You know, depending on what happens. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's basically finished. And for anyone out there <laughs> on the internet that's interested, Shadowcaster is looking for members. Yeah. Wanted, dead or alive, I'm as long sure. as they can play. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. Um, and what's the song about, like, lyrically? Uh, basically, you know, when I think about it, it's 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 basically a fictional song, but kind of the overall message is like kind of going with your gut feeling on things, and you know, not being afraid to go your own way, yeah, and going after something even if people you know think it's stupid or whatever, you know. What I mean, yeah. Uh, obviously, we have to listen to advice from people, but you kind of have to weigh everything that you get and you know make to make your own decisions. So. Yeah. Kind of, kind of a, a gloss of it, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's a good message. Uh, you know, obviously, you don't want to do anything out, out, outrightly stupid. But <laughs> obviously, there's plenty of uh, examples. We were talking about Jason Molina earlier playing tenor guitars and yeah. taking tuning pegs off Gibsons. Yeah, I'm sure that you know that's the same thing. For it's sure. uh, you got to do what feels right to you. Yeah. Um, just about at all costs, at all times, I would say. For sure. You yeah. know, so. Especially when it comes to art. I mean, that's like, you know, if you, I don't know, most, most artists aren't trying to copy anyone specifically. They kind of no. just meld their influences into, sure. this is what I am. And, yeah. You know, I, I think, I mean, I know sometimes I worry that, like, my influences show too much, but then you kind of stand back and you're like, well, it's not them. You know, it's me, so. <laughs> well, you know, and the funny thing is that I think to a, to a large extent, Whatever you perceive your uh, influences to be, or your most comparable, you know, sounding bands or songwriters to what you do, um, it 
it's almost without exception never what the listener hears. Sure. You know, sure. Um, you know, <laughs> I've been told the we you know, I, I'm sure always in a polite way, but I've been told that I sound like all kinds of people with, yeah. whose music I couldn't, I can't stomach. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you never know how the listener is going to perceive what you're doing. It's like one time uh, I had posted, I think it was on uh, one of the yeah, one of the pages. I, I don't think it was Craigslist, but it was one of the Facebook pages for uh, looking for members for Shadowcaster and kind of described the sound I was going for. Sure. And someone said something to the extent about Rammstein, and I'm like, how is that remotely Western? They have that one song with whistling at the beginning of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, they have a it's they have like, a spaghetti Western no, whistle. <laughs> that's not desert rock. It's not. Country, it's not, you know, it's just like, I don't know. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I haven't kept up with uh, Rammstein, but when I hear your music, it's not the first thing that talks in my head. Or, or, the, or the second through hundredth thing. Angry, angry German new metal, that's not what I sound like now? No, <laughs> that's not really the vibe I get. But yeah, you, you never know, man. People pull, um, and, and I think it always comes from a positive place when people tell you those things. For sure. You know, I've been told that I, you know, I was in a band probably eight, ten years ago, and we were compared to, like, Collective Soul. I'm like, well, you know, I like those records when I was in fifth grade, yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't necessarily hear it today. Um, another one, I I was compared to King Crimson. Uh, same band, actually. So in one <laughs> band, we were compared at one show to King Crimson and another Collective Soul. So um, not a whole lot of shared... Did you have keys in the band? The key player? No. No? No. Uh, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we did not. Uh, no. So, you know, where people, what people, people here, you can never control. For sure. And, and, you know, I think the fastest way to be a dissatisfied artist is to do anything that isn't 100% what you want to do. For sure. Yeah. Um, as soon as you start thinking about outside interests, what people want to hear, what uh, you know, what lyric or rhythm someone wants to dance to, um, you're already down the wrong path. Yeah. You just gotta do what's right for you. Because yeah. if you're not happy, what's the, what's the point? Sure. So. Yeah. Anyway, now that <laughs> we've gotten deep. Um, so I always end things with a this band or this band. Um, you kind of make it tough sometimes because we, <laughs> we talk about music so often. Um, so obviously we were talking about Jason Molina earlier, so I'm thinking <laughs> that. Now I'm thinking Rammstein, but who who do you put <laughs> Rammstein up against? You know, Orgy? I don't know. <laughs> what, what other band? Uh, I'm going to do, you know, well, you're not really much of a classic rock guy, are you? Throw them at me. Bob Seeger? Yeah. Okay. Alright, well, this is what we're doing. Bob Seeger, who I adore, yeah. but I will be the first to say I think he has many, many bad songs. <laughs> <laughs> he's got some, yeah. you know, transcendent material, yeah. but he's also got, you know, horizontal bop and <laughs> then come to Papa. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, let's say, Joe Walsh. And we'll just say Joe Walsh, nothing in the Eagles. Okay. Uh, just Joe Walsh, either Solo or James Gang. Okay. Uh, I think I have to go with Seeger. Although I love Joe Walsh's guitar playing and his style and yeah. you know, whatnot. Totally cool dude. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think Seeger had the kind of the overall yeah. you know, kind of groovy thing going on. Yeah. So. That's, it's, that's a tough p pick between the two. Going with the Sieg. The Sieg. The Sieg. The Siege of the Sieg. One time I was at a party. And, like, there's been many times in my life I probably should have been punched in the face. <laughs> and just wasn't. Yeah. You know, inexplicably. Right. I was at a party. Uh, and there was a cop. <laughs> and he, was, he wasn't on duty. He was off duty. But we were at this party. And we're hanging out. And I had Seeger on, you know, um, Fire Lake or something. And he went on this, like, mini rant about how, uh, you know, he just couldn't get into Seeger and blah, blah, blah. 
And I think I told him that, it, that if he couldn't get in the Seeger, he just, there was nothing between his legs. <laughs> he had to be dickless because I, I, I couldn't under, you know, I just couldn't fathom how someone couldn't be into Bob Seeger, yeah. you know. Now, granted, you get into Bob Seeger system and some of the other stuff, yeah. it can go a little sideways. But sure. Silver Bullet Band? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hard to beat. Definitely. Does your uh, adoration of Metallica play into the Seeger choice at all? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, you're yeah. you're close to my age. That came out. What was it like? Seventh, eighth grade. I definitely knew the Metallica version before Turn I recognized the page. It, yeah. I mean, as the, uh, yeah. The Seeger version, but yeah. I mean, I love both versions. So. And yeah. Like, yeah. The the Seeger version has a lot of emotion in it, you know, which is really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like you know hearing uh, knocking on heaven's door, you know. Yeah. The both versions of that, but like when you, you know, I didn't like Bob Dylan for a while when I was younger because yeah. I just liked metal a lot. And, yeah. His voice was weird, but you know, then yeah. listening to the Bob Dylan version later, when I kind of, you know, my ears opened up a little bit, and I'm like, it's super heartfelt, you know. So there's kind of that. It, there's definitely another level of a. Uh, yeah, of emotion, um, compared to you know what Axel. Yeah. Axel and the boys are doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Bob's touching on something uh, that I don't think shredding. Yeah. Less Paul guitar solos necessarily <laughs> yeah. help at all, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Sure. All right, cool. So Seeger over Joe Walsh. Yeah. All right. <laughs>